Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached it. Our deciding game three, our final match of the day, and the second to last match of the Alienware Area 51 Dota 2 Cup. I'm LD. I'm joined here by Coddle Guy. Game three, the draft has begun. Let's waste no time. We hop into it now. Okay. Right. Here we go. Let's go. Time to begin. Three, two, one. Bam. Bang. Boom. <laughs> Wisp, troll, ban. No surprises. NIP have first pick. Can't let him have that pesky wisp ball and trolls OP. So he's got to go. On the other side, NIP, they get rid of AA and Omni Knight. Pretty intriguing stuff. And then, of course, it's first pick, and you want to get a support maybe for your uh, start? Why not Ventral Spirit? She's got 100% pick ban rate. She's uh, got it all, man. Total package. Should date her. Mm, I don't know. She's got red blood, blood red eyes. Just once a month, dude. Literally an undead spirit, like a shell of a human being. That's uh, that's baggage. Yeah, baggage. She's got some baggage. Yeah, She's cute, yeah. though. I don't know. I'm not, not. I think a little too crazy, Dakota. A little too crazy. It's okay. It's okay. Well, you, you need we'll a nice girl, out. you know, like a nice crystal maiden. Someone who's wholesome and then girl next door. Mm, too prudy. Too, too prudy? Too, too prudy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, we've got a lecherous one. The Dazzle now picked up by Empire. He's got the teeth to match, a little bit of yeah. face pain. and uh, The Venge, Dazzle, these seem to be the two premier supports right now in, in CIS especially, but in, in Europe in general. Just everybody loving them and generally either banned or picked right away. I'm going to try to foresee uh, not only his axe work beautifully with something like Dazzle, but maybe a possible Lycan is something if they want to take advantage of that dire side and plus just works beautifully there with Dazzle. And the Yoki wants redemption, man. That last game, it was a fluke. It was a fluke. And he wants to be able to come back dominant as ever. But Eight Mother's like, I already got a dominant game on my Viper. I'm just going to reprieve that role. So. Viper against an axe, we saw it works out very well. You're able to, to kite the beast, but uh, pretty standard stuff. Uh, we don't know yet the tempo of this game and you know how they want to kind of take it from here. Yeah, moving through the bands now. Disruptor removed. Empire maybe gearing up for something like the storm for resolution, and potentially that silent doom if the, if they look to run him as a one position this time around. Do you have to be careful about? how greedy they get with their lanes though that looked to be the biggest problem last game definitely had the ability to go late and also to do well in the lanes but they got ambushed by the tri lane as soon as they gave up the, those first two kills they had no solution for the lighting stage so i think if empire go for anything more greedy here they just maybe you go for like one hero that requires a little more space and support but picking up the two melee heroes that just can't rotate can't do anything early is that seemed to be their downfall. So maybe, I, I still think maybe a Storm in the offing. Skyrath Mage could be great here to pair with the Axe. With the Ancient Apparition Band, you're somewhat limited. Zeus is another option for Empire if they want a little more burst damage to go with that Axe pick. We'll see where um, they take it from here. Brew's been ignored, and they already banned out Disruptor, who's typically good against Brew with the extra benefit of that silence. Since we don't really see any more of that. It used to be all about, like, one team gets brewed first, and the other team is like, well, then I'll just get Skyrath Mage. And we'll just kind of have this kind of a game like we do all the time. But that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. We, we've forgotten about the Skyrath Mage a little bit. Uh, the days kind of fell off a bit with the Faceless Void. I still, again, feel like could be a good utility in a lot of these lineups who do favor a big team fight impact. But for now, the ban out on the Tusk, which Team Empire have gone for and love to literally snowball with. And Big Bad Brad's got to go, so they get rid of the... Benefit of having a good... Well, you know what? That's... I don't know. Do they run safe lane Centaur often? I mean, I feel like with already Axe being picked up, the Centaur band feels awkward to me. Um, It is good against mass slows. That's one consideration. Yeah. It's pretty good against Doom as well, if NIP wanted to pick that. Uh, if someone gets Doom, you just stampede them away. It's a hero that Empire used to run a lot more, but as of late, has not been a go-to by any means. Uh, when they liked to run it, it was back when the old DK did, where they'd run the Ice 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 Invoker, Mushi would switch to the offlane and play Centaur, and Empire saw that strategy, started using it a lot for themselves around Starlighter Season 9, but yeah, Centaur feels more like a niche pick as of late, and, and Axe just feels like a better Centaur. Jungle's better, still has more burst damage and, and more finishing power, better against physical damage dealers, Not doesn't offer you quite as much global presence, but... 
Yeah, it just seems like Axe is kind of a, a super centaur in this current patch. Yeah, I would agree with that. Clink's going to get picked up. I was going to say third pick last draft was Silence Hero and possibly is going to be here. Don't see Clink's a whole lot very often. Oh, incoming drought. <laughs> but uh, Visage here. And with them already committing to this Clink's, I don't think we'll be seeing a Drow snipe. So I don't, you're gonna... I don't know about Drow Visage versus Axe, though. There's also a Bristleback out there, though I don't know if Empire can squeeze it into their draft, but Axe and Bristle can match up extremely well against the Familiars, and that's yeah, that that's explains true. the Centaur ban, though. You ban Centaur, you're thinking Drow. And I don't know if Empire will be surprised. It used to be, I'd say it's the most important hero to ban going back like three months ago. Teams that didn't ban Centaur would usually find themselves heavily punished. Even Cloud9, who were executing the Drow Visage very well, would frequently lose when teams got Centaur against them. But still, Axe kind of serves that role. Um, and yeah, I, I think Empire still look to to fight aggressively despite the, the Drow Visage. They won't be too phased by it. Uh, Axe against those birds, man. He does a pretty swift job being able to control them and just wipe them out immediately. So it's that's going to be very good for Empire. And picking Visage into it is small gamble, but they feel confident enough to kind of go with this dynamic duo, the old C9 classic, which many teams still fall back on. Even Polar had good success with it at Star Ladder for a while. So now they're going to have it. So serious push. And Viper, obviously, a hero who's not known to bring out huge right click, but... You know, is more just kind of being able to take a lick in and keep on kicking. Now he has huge right click to add on top of that throughout the game, so it works out beautifully for them. But yeah, man, we'll have to see. They do have one more uh, pickup to go for on the side of NIP, and I believe it's their off lane grab, and they could go for a heavy team impact hero. Still available is the Tide, even though they already did ban out the bat. But we'll see here. Ban on the Witch Doctor to round things out. They already have so much heal on Empire, though. Jug Ward and Dazzle. That would be a, a huge amount of sustain. Yeah, Grave will be nice this game as well. There's there's an axe already on Empire side, so no way to deal with the Grave per se. Where did Empire go? They need a they need a support here. Um could be a Damn. I mean maybe they just go for the Rubik again. There's nothing that great to steal this game. Like Viper Strike's pretty eh. Familiars are great, but shouldn't really be something that you steal very often. Drow spells are pretty worthless. Lion's been ignored. Oh, Ooh, good call. Right on beat. Yeah, Lion is was a first pick priority. Good at being able to close the gap, which is if he gets if he gets the farm to get a blink dagger quick, which I imagine will be the case. They'll put the more selfless role in the daddle. Oh, Lion man. can go right the for push the blink dagger. But this from is NIP. ridiculous. All the range, all the push. You got double aura, vengeful spirit, and drow ranger. This is going to be out of control. Uh, from NIP. They are going all in right here to try to push themselves into the finals and just go blitz in right past Empire. This is this is going to be interesting. I would say out of all the teams in that are close to tier 1 in Europe right now, NIP are the team that like to run push cheese strats the most. They they will bust them out. I'm honestly surprised they haven't run heroes like Pugnut. I think a lot of it comes down to how much they love the Ape Mother Viper where yeah, you can pick a carry like an anti mage around that and still come out on top, but where the Viper really excels is in that constant fighting style and around like the 10 to 20 minute mark. And push strats normally time up pretty or sync up pretty nicely with that. Uh, by the way, I saw a couple people. Oh no, I can't change my mini map icons. Dota 2, please. It's doing that thing where I can't type eyes in console. Have you ever had this bug? Mm -mm. Oh, there we go. I fixed it somehow. Yeah. Okay. That's good. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Let's introduce the teams. We've got NIP. They took game two in a, at a wallop, walloping fashion. They look to make this a 2-0 comeback to finish out 2-1. Handskin on the Visage. Seal Kid, the Vengeful Spirit. Era going to be playing your Drow. Ape Mother on the Viper. And that will leave Jonas on the Jakira. All right. And for Empire on your dire side, Yoki going to give it another go on his axe. we got Resolution, who's going to be playing the Clinks, still hanging around the mid lane. Uh, up and above, we got Aloha Dance on your Dazzle. We have Always Want to Fly playing that Lion. And, of course, that leaves Silent playing the Jug. He did find success in the game number one of this best of three series with lots of farm and lots of space. Looking to do a bit of the same. And NIP now clustering up near the bottom rune. Let's see. Are they going to contest this tri lane at all? Oh, we, we need Dota 2 sound. There we go. Mm, doesn't look like it. For now, Yogi way off in the jungle. Does he even go bottom? They just send a support that way. 
So they're gonna they're gonna run the four position, not four position, but just the the jungle axe, and basically sack the off lane entirely, at least for now. Yeah, it happens sometimes. I know uh, Polar Dude a lot too. Mag will often just kind of go right to the jungle if he's playing a bat rider or you know just wants to secure the farm more than risk you know getting put in a pickle where you're getting zoned back, getting absolutely nothing. And well, it did happen last last game for Yoki. Now he can kind of go on tempo. And just getting a, a secured timing for his blink dagger. It's not like the jungle has been warded out or scouted thus far, but like you said, this will leave a lot of opportunity for the bottom lane to get lots of farm on that drought. And IP running these strong dual lanes. Jakiro, Venge, very strong. And well, as for that safe lane, the drow visage, quite good against the solo off laner. I, I don't think X would have gotten much out of this, whether it's a dual or a tri lane. So I like the jungling off the bat. And at the same time, I don't know if Empire can really punish this dual lane. They have the Dazzle, a little kill potential, but Jakiro is just so beefy. Five five armor already, 650 health. He's got to be way out of position to go down. So with them running dual lanes here still on NIP, Jakiro seems to be the one to take the majority of the farm. They're not going to really be able to creep up through the lane to get those early pot shots in on the tower that they like, but they'll still be able to get a lot done. At least secure a bit of farm, but already Aloha Dance on to controlling that creep equilibrium, getting back under the tower. Silent should have a relatively easy time with the assistance from Always Want to Fly on securing CS, but no early aggression here. Uh, very different from the last game. Yeah, mid lane clicks normally pretty good 1v1 as far as CS goes, but you're up against Nether Toxin as well as the Drow Aura. It's going to be hard to keep Ape Mother down. Of course, Drow will free farm. And Jakiro, not, not a hero that benefits particularly from the, the Precision R, much more about the, the spell spam and liquid fire, but they're going to see us well in all their lanes, it looks like. So NIP should come out on top in terms of that department. For now, the Axe get a good CS, but it's in the jungle, and Yoki will need a little assistance from Aloha Dance, so he'll get it. Tranquil Boot's coming very soon, so on good track. Very fast pace for the jungle Axe. Resolution needs this bottle. It looks like it will finally make its way out because up to this point, you only had one shared tango left while Eight Mother has a wealth of regen. Still three tangos, one shared and a salve, so he can bully as much as he wants in this lane. And eventually, Resolution is just going to need to get some sort of heal to at least hold his ground. So I could feel like this began to tip towards Eight Mother's favor a bit. And we'll just see if Resolution should be able to hold his own. Yeah, he'll be able to secure CS, but you know, we'll see how much damage he's going to be taking from Eight Mother. The good thing is Clinks is much better at rune control, and once he gets six, he has virtually unlimited sustain. Can even give the lane to a support. Maybe they put the Lion there, or the Dazzle. These are fairly level-dependent supports, as they think about going in and always want to fly. Not going to do it just yet, though. So, stun on the Silent. Dual Breath to follow this up. They're going to try and auto-attack him down, but not enough damage for the kill. Yeah, I... I think overall the Clinks will lose the lane, but he can... So far he's CSing evenly. And even if he does lose the lane, it doesn't really matter, because he can just mm -hmm. go elsewhere and, and still have an impact for the team. The early bottle, probably an Eternal NVS kind of clinks, Ooh, constant roaming and aggression. On to Jonas here, could be in trouble, Blade Fury and right clicks, and this looks to be your first blood, and it will be. Empire are going to be the ones to get themselves on the board first with that takedown, and now they're going to begin to set the tempo of this aggression in the top lane, and they also have a lot going for them. I mean, Axe is matching CS, you know, with Drow, just about on par, if not trading, as he already has a big stack happening. So this is where the sacrifice just does pay off for Yoki because he thrives in getting a good time Blink Dagger and being able to be that initiator. And Viz Visage coming in mid. They have no... Oh, they do have a sentry, actually. They might be able to kill Resolution. It's a level one poison attack, though. He's got to walk pretty far into the lane. They go with the Grave Chill and now start slowing him down. Soul Assumption comes through and... Great rotation in. Is, that Clinks was holding surprisingly even. Even up against Precision R, he's getting runes and Visage not normally known for his early roaming, but getting it done here. Good rotation. Maybe tricky to keep tabs on a lane you don't really have anyone on your team involved with, but Pesky Visage able to snag up that rune, comes in, conveniently has the sentries, and just yeah. perfectly executed gank. And I, I mean, they have mother. the Observer Ward bottom, but just nobody looking when it was picked up, unfortunately. Or, or if he was, wasn't worried about the gank. Yeah, or you'd have a teammate there saying, hey, this person's missing, but Yoki's in the jungle. I mean, he's probably supposed to be on duty as well, I'm sure, scouting out the lane, but maybe they just didn't happen to notice Visage creeping behind their back, and, well, it works out for NIP to even things back up. 
Free farm for Era does not go for that early Midas. Just picks up the the Wraith Bands, the Aquila, Boots snagged. Wants to give a little more push to the laning stage. They try to get the Visage level 6, and hey, you leave your bottom lane empty? Free tower for me. Already. They're bringing in Aloha Dance mid right as they try to go on resolution. He was there anyway, so not going to happen. Yeah, he'll be near nearby, and he kind of does because he doesn't have that TP, for now at least, to fall back on to get him easily to the lane. So being nearby is the next best thing as he also continues to help out Yoki on the side. This is going to be a, a big lump sum of money coming his way, and he already has 1k gold. So he's he's on great timing to, to get that Blink Dagger, which they will need because Drought, like you said previously, getting a lot of the bottom lane, now getting that tower adds a bit of gold for everyone. Even the supports who are not committed to staying in a lane, they'll still be able to get some farms from something. Yeah, it's all about the X blink right now. You get the X blink and and then you start trying to find pickoffs. Don't let NIP group up. Don't let them start threatening your tier one mid or top. Your your more important tier ones, and definitely don't let them go for freebie tier twos. If they go right now for the bottom tier two, uh, with the next catapult, I I don't know if Empire will be ready to defend that. But it's the other four towers that they they have to be ready to stand strong. That's that's where X has to come online and. Until then, Empire just have to slowly seed ground, accepting that their lineup just isn't that good at tower defense without a blink. So it's coming. He's getting there. He's 1,400 gold. Yoki's on a good pace, to be honest. And the other side, you have Jonas, who's ever since that pickoff hasn't really found his groove back in this lane, has to play so cautiously, is always want to fly, is always lurking in the dark, ready to kind of move in and keep him back, so... It's a bit of a slow start hero. He does manage to peek to his level 5 position, but just needs to kind of wiggle in, get a liquid fire off, and hope that it maybe gets a, a creep kill here and there. You can see Hanskin playing defensively, drops a sentry, and, well, it's a timely sentry, because guess who's in town? It's Resolution. He's still got a little bit of Death Pact left. It's going to wear off. And expect to see a support quite likely take it over mid soon. He can now jungle. He can gank. This is why Clinks is really strong. Even though he fell a bit behind the Viper after the gank, he can make up for elsewhere as top lane. They go in with the Hex on the Seal Kid, and the follow-up coming out straight into the Omni Slash. A quick, clean kill. A resolution now, backing off for the 8-minute rune, and maybe even heading bottom. Where Aloha Excellent. Dance is dying. Yep, see you later. So they get their own kill there on the bottom lane to make it a, a fair trade of two supports. Resolution still scouting out the area, but good rotation over. They were looking to get Yoki involved a bit to help him get even quicker on timing with that blink. So he just gets an extra bit of XP near level 7 for him. So he'll have everything in his arsenal for when that blink does come into play, which it's starting to look like they'll desperately need it. Maybe taking Era down would be a nice grab. Both Era and 8 Mother are at the top of the net worth right now. 8 Mother also hasn't really ventured anywhere. He's just going to go headstrong towards the mechanism, it looks like. And now the rotations come, but... It looks like for now they're just going to kind of play it slow and methodical until they feel like they need to be able to converge elsewhere. They're waiting on a few things for NIP. The mech is probably the biggest. Eight Mother's getting very close to that. For Drow, just levels, mainly the level 2 ultimate. Yasha will be helpful. They have Visage Familiars and Medallion, so they're pretty much set there. And I think the big thing for NIP is they need to get a few levels on Seal Kit. He's got no boots. He's level 3. Venge does not need the farm, but uh, beyond the boots, but definitely needs to have some sort of level progression. She's an engine for the push, and right now not Ooh. getting much, but they're setting a trap for resolution. Oh boy. Oh Hi. mama. Hey, Hi, how are you doing? We're Roshan, bro. We're doing Roche, by the way. You want to come join us? No, you, no, you can't. You can't. This is our thing, so that couldn't have gone any better. They've already had the initial thought look like to move in the Roche pit and get it set up, and I guess with Resolution disappearing from the mid lane and they already had that sentry planted, they figured they'd wait to see if he was rotating over and well, they're welcomed with a nice easy kill and now an easy Aegis. Big item for Drow. Pretty squishy by nature. The Axe Blink is coming, but I don't know if it's coming quickly enough. Even though the Axe on Blink will be online, is there enough follow-up is the question. They're now going to have to fight against a mech as soon as this tower drops. A Mother should have it. Deny may be attempted by Aloha Dance. Oh, he gets Ooh. it too. That actually delays the, the mech by like one more creep wave at least. That hurts. No, it does. Because, I mean, you're right. This is something that Empire are looking to fall back on to kind of help them a bit as the mid game does develop. They can hopefully get a few kills under their belt with Yoki being able to do that on his now blink axe. But 
NIP have found so much farm. They've taken a couple of towers now. Now they got the Roche, so they've got great items Dyer plus the second life. So attack. you think you're going to have an upper hand with this blink and taking a big team fight, but NIP are going to be really hard to take down. Eight, Eight mother. Oh no, there's trouble. an X blink now. He's got to be careful. Mech is coming. He cannot die before he gets this mech. He is he is the most important hero outside the drow for the push. Oh, smoke can be popped any moment, and they jump into the seal kit here. Ventral Spirit could be in trouble, plus the heal bomb. They move in, there's going to be the chop. They get the stuns off of the familiar bridge. Meanwhile, always want to fly. Big right click damage. Does manage to get the finger off. Oh, very low his hand skin, but he does end up going down. Now silent, trying to spin himself out of here. It's a two for one right now, but this could make it an even two for two. And a nice grab. Plus, they put out the dust. They see resolution. He's trying to go for the TP, and they get the ice path off. It's going to be a three for two, a double kill for Era. Very big fight right there. And plus, they had gotten the tower. NIP are building up another big snowball here in game number three. Yeah, Aloha Dance only has level one shallow grave. So he tried to get in range to grave his buddy there. Unfortunately, with the TP canceled, probably still dies. So I don't think dust would have worn off in time, but. Oh, they're thwarted. They give up kills and they give up towers. And you're up against Drow Visage. You know towers will drop, but when you start giving away kills as well, your your engine for the comeback is just losing momentum and steam. They will blink onto Arrow. Remember, he still has Aegis, though. This is a lot to commit. Mech is online as well. They can keep him in fighting shape for some time here. Blade Fury gets onto him, though. Perhaps NIP have overstayed their welcome. Your first dunk. Do they have a little follow-up? Call is ready. And they'll get the call off on Era. Ice Path catches quite a few. They need more support, though. Where's that defensive swap? It's not ready, but Era survives. Turns on to Yogi. They'll bring down Silent as well. And now, Yogi. Oh, is he going to make it out of here? Era gets off another Silence, and it's the Visage just cleaning up. As Resolution will end up falling, it's four dead. He gets the kill. Was it really worth it, though? Limping away is always oh. want to fly. The last man standing. A long range wave of terror. They just need Ice one path. more auto attack. Yo! Oh. Will be able to barely dance himself back to the base. And big slaughter. They do eventually get Era, but that's what's expected. Empire, they went into this thinking that maybe they'll have the upper hand. They Even with the second go around, Yoki jumping in with the blink, the sustain power is already building up nicely for NIP, and they have a nice long winded fight that they eventually could come out on top of. And these birds and their damage and those double auras just can't underestimate that. They have pretty much every core item they need. The Drow BKB or possibly complete Sanjin Yasha may be the one thing they're lacking. You look at this game, I, th I really think they're going to need the finger of death in a normal fight to kill the Drow. She, she ends up going down twice there, but remember, that fight was like 3v4, 3v5 until the Venge finally just showed up. That was also without defensive swap, without the Yule Scepter from the Jakiro to disengage when Axe blinks in and, call, blinks in and calls. So looking towards the next fights, if you're NIP... If your draw gets BKB, she's virtually immortal, barring some horrible positioning. Eight Mother TP's bottom, and they see him, but is this going to be an easy takedown? He's near Tier 1, which others could rotate to, and he has a mech. Mm, they're, they're thinking about it here. They don't have the finger, so... Oh, they, actually, they, actually oh, they have it now. Finger. They yeah. do have it now. It just came up, so... They're, they're waiting it out patiently. Yoki blitzes forward, does get the call here. And this is going to be a tough cookie to crack. They do pull out the finger and the Omni Slash. It is enough to get it done, but now can they get away scot-free? Another big question. Yoki puts himself in the corner, gets the TP off. Swap back, silent. There's the stun. Era shows up, and it looks like they might be able to get a return kill. Yeah, they will. They go ahead, yules him up. Jonas showing off his nice farm on that Jakiro. And they trade one for one. And NIP, they got to be happy with that because Era gets the kill. He gets the kill. Ags is... Oh, the other item is the Ags for Visage. He's got the level 2 ulti soon, about one level off, and the Ags coming. So, let's see. What is the bird cooldown at? Oh, he just resummoned them, unfortunately. So, he's going to have to wait a little while. He gets blinked and called, and they may get the chop on him. Looks like they will. Oh, the range. <laughs> Looked like he's almost going to be able to slip away, but... That was from the top right of the, the key. That was, that was some Michael Jordan ups right there. Yeah. Nice dunk. Helps him get back a bit. It's feeling like NIP are getting a lot done. Trade of that kill is another objective as they take down that tier 2 bottom and they go in. You'll set up Ice Path. Always want to fly. See you later. Oh, they're giving up, a f I feel like, just a few too many kills now. The key thing is getting that Visage kill. He ultimately will dish out more damage than the Drow in most fights at this stage. So. Delay the eggs a little bit. They are chasing Yoki. They have a Yule Scepter in two seconds. 
Jonas, can he get in range for anyone? He gets the Dazzle. Here we go. Dual breath and lots of slow, and this kills the Dazzle. <laughs> He's dead. It's pretty, it's pretty clinical. I think Sanjin if you're an IP, you go for these tier yeah. twos. I don't see any reason to wait. Nope, yeah, get it done. Then you can step back, take a moment, itemize a bit more. Roche will be up. You go in, feel confident enough that you could take a big team fight and get that Aegis, and then you start considering making a go at high ground. It's just so much damage. Even 8 Mother benefiting a lot from that aura. And of course, Visage. That this tier 2 is going to be taken uncontested. Now, all outer towers taken down from Empire here. And remind you, they need this game. It's not like it's a double elimination. The team that loses is done in the Alien Workup. There seems to be a little disagreement here. Jakiro trying real hard to stop the push top, but the rest of NIP really wanting to go in mid and. In the end, they're not going to be able to force the high ground breach. Split push comes out from Silent. He takes a tower as well. A little hesitation there from NIP. Maybe costing them a shot at the high ground push. It gives a little extra gold to Empire. Oh, Omni Slash comes in. Solos the Venge. It looked like Silent was done. But ended up just strutting back in the lane. And these kind of kills will take the wind out of your sails if you're looking to group up and go for the five man. If yeah, you're an IP, to... you wait for the, the Visage Ags and maybe the next Roche. But beyond that, oh. you got to be going to break the base. Might have been a mistake there. He grabbed at the Invis room. I think maybe they Invis saw the rune disappear because they are pinging out the area. But maybe not because they are on their tails. Oh, they don't get the stun initially. Now they see Era. They get it and lock him in place. They even commit the finger. The dunk. Not yet. The second one not going to work. Gust back. Era creates space for himself and will be able to walk away. Now they turn their attention onto Yoki. Frantic for a TP out. We'll get it. So Empire, lucky on this one is they're able to slip oh. on home, but they don't no get the TP gank. No TP on Aloha and, Dance, uh, though. Well, I say that too soon, though. Is Aloha Dance, he's going to walk away. He's okay. he, he just rings around the rosy. Meanwhile, oh, Jonas Bosley. goes down bottom. He goes in with the Yules, and then there's just no follow-up. Now Resolution limbering out of there. He'll survive as well, it looks like. The skeleton wall cooling down, and NIP. They go from having like that, that critical mass where if you play it right, you can win the game to letting Empire back in, a couple of sloppy deaths, and one or two more bad fights, and it's going to be Empire's game. They're already close. Ooh, gush, silent, silenced. One more right click. All right, nice quick grab right there for Era. Catches silent doing uh, his jungle. He's like, that's mine. You don't touch that. And gets his own bit of a kill, so... NIP able to slowly bring it back. Don't want to be given too much away to Empire, it looks like. And maybe with that previous push down the mid lane where they weren't quite sure what they wanted to do. Maybe they were questioning the cooldowns. Lion's Finger was on cooldown during that period. Plus with where Silent was, maybe uh, the majority of them felt confident being able to at least get some good damage on that tier 3. I mean, you do have all that bonus aura damage and liquid fire. So it's I guess it's a fair argument, but they played safe. Ags is close. Hanskin has level 2 ulti. He just summoned the birds, though, so they're going to have to wait about 100 seconds, which he'll get the Ags, they'll get the next Roche if they play it right, and, and then with that fresh summon of birds, you you got to go for it, because Empire begin to split push more. They're showing always want to fly top. Resolution went Crystalis. He opts to skip the Orchid, just going pure burst damage here. And eventually Empire will just be able to blow up the birds. At some point, Click starts like 2-3 shotting them with Strafe, he can get out six, seven arrows in just a matter of a second or two, and maybe three seconds, and all of a sudden, you have no familiars. It's an Empire just hanging on and hoping that this next push that NIP are gearing up for will fall flat on its face. It feels like, unfortunately, they were banking on the idea of maybe Always Want to Fly being able to at least put together the farm for that Blink Dagger and being that insta lockdown, insta CC, but... He hasn't been able to do anything of the sort, so both the supports have been a little bit poor. So they're trying their best right now to at least find that bit of farm. Klinks is going with the Daedalus, but now with the, the Outer Tower is done, NIP step back after a couple of fights. They wait for the Roche, they get the Roche, and now it's time to go knocking at the Empire door. Ags is now complete, everybody clumping up. They've almost got Max Vengeance, Sara. all the tools are here. The Viper Ags halfway done, he's got the HP items that he needs, and Clicks goes for a quick blink dagger. So, looking to hope, hopefully they can spread NAP out. That's where Empire are much stronger. You get onto the Drow, force her back, disable the Aura, isolate heroes who are scattering. 
And IP prefer the orderly fights. They just want to siege carefully, controlled fashion, and not get too discombobulated. They are pushing in now, and they're looking for the melee. Here we go. Nice swap back. Jonas going to get saved for now, plus the mech follow-up. They're going to be A-OK. -okay. Era gets a quick pick online, followed up with Yoki, who has to be forced to come out with a buyback because they're going to lose racks pretty damn fast. They only had the slow siege to get to Tier 3, and you can already see those racks down pretty low. Meanwhile, looks like Silent getting in on the action, but they're going to play it very methodical here. Right after they took them that Tier 3, they dropped both an OBS and a Sentry just to make sure they can see what's happening. But Resolution's over on the left-hand side. Maybe thinking about a flank play, but there's really no easy target. They've now got the level two Ags Visage Birds. The racks just explode. Call will pull them back into tier fours, and they might get them all. There's no resummon. Where's that stop? No micro. Oh. They get the racks. It does cost them some familiars. And IP, it's not over yet. You need to take two lanes, then you feel 80, 90% confident you have this one locked up. But I think you just back off heal, wait for the familiars, and. You should still have Aegis, I believe. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, yeah, they're gonna have three, four minutes on it. Yeah, plenty of time to wait a bit for those cooldowns, and then they can make another go while they still have that extra life. Resolution, though, going behind enemy lines. Would love to get a pick on anyone here. Very close to Hanskin. Should be able to scout him out right here, but it's in that position where, where it might be a bit too awkward. I hate trying to gank people one. here. You always yeah, get it's so easy to get there. fogged. Yeah, he doesn't like it either. They see him go for that re-skeleton walk. It looks like, and they immediately ping it. He's not alone, though. Maybe trying to bait NIP onto him. The Axe is now in Viz and in the neighborhood. Not going to go for it. At least not yet. At least get that Tier 1. Here comes Arrow, though. He's got a Scotty. Oh, boy. Silent going to get slowed even through that Blade Fury. And Hanskin should be able to follow it up nicely with Big Burst. Silent, there's nothing he can do. Desperate throws out the Shallow Grave to save him for now. But Grave Chill will slow him down a bit. Plus, that Scotty keeps bringing out the damage. Era just shows that I am... The mighty core of this game and the real archer and is able to quickly manhandle silent. This is not looking good for Empire fans. No. Will an NIP finally get their revenge? Uh, it's on a much smaller stage than Starladder, but they're close, Dakota. They could push in mid. Maybe they just swing right bottom. They're going to have the, fam the full flock of familiars up in just about 20 seconds here. And they smoke just to get in range of Yoki. Yule's to start. This will disable his blink. Ice path to follow. He ain't going anywhere. Pops the blade mail, but they'll just work on him. Now the two hero silence. Well played by Era onto Aloha Dance, who goes scepters. Is Era gonna walk up the hill? You betcha. Straight on to always wanna fly. He tanks a lot of nukes and just keeps on going forward. Who needs the bonus agility? It's not even required here. Four dead. And this probably is it. No buybacks on Empire aside from the jug, and they just tap out. They are eliminated from the Alienware Area 51 Dota 2 Cup, and it will be NIP going to lock horns with Virtus Pro in the Grand Finals tomorrow. Very nicely done. And IP get their small bit of redemption from their Star Ladder run. It was Empire who did knock them down to the lower bracket. But now they get something back here. And they'll be able to move on to the Grand Finals. Empire do walk away with a little bit of money and did put on a stellar performance up to this point. But got to get props, at least ever since I started casting with you. It was all dominance from NIP. Oh. NIP looking good, a team that continues to impress. They're still a young team. They just got sponsored. They have been together for, what is it, like two, three months at this point. Relatively new, but they, they look solid, buddy. And with that, guys, it wraps up today's broadcast. Tomorrow, we have the Grand Finals. It'll be same place. I believe same time as our first match was today, which was, I want to say 17 CET. I'll double check that for y'all. We'll tweet it out at twitter.com slash beyondthesummit. Uh, and with that said, speaking of Twitter, follow CoddleGuy, twitter.com slash CoddleGuy. If you'd like, follow myself as well, twitter.com slash LDDota. All VODs will be available at youtube.com slash TV. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Congratulations to NIP. They shake the monkey off their backs. They knock down Empire, who are now eliminated, still get $1,500 for their trouble. And didn't commit too much. Only two best of three. So congratulations to them, and they move on tomorrow. They'll face Virtus Pro in the final best of three. You've been watching the Alienware Area 51 Dota 2 Cup, brought to you by Curse Entertainment, as well as Beyond the Summit. We'll see you next time.